But that's uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today is is SSL, uh, why it's important to encrypt traffic uh, to and from your website and uh, and within the uh, the application itself. The big question is what is SSL and and why does it actually matter? I guess at, at its most basic definition, SSL is just uh, a, a way to encrypt uh, traffic. It, it stands for secure socket layer, and it and it allows you to encrypt traffic uh, from your audience's browser to your server, right? You mentioned certificates, and I guess that's the, uh, the one of the main uh, components of SSL, and um, and so that's a, a certificate that acts as a, a public-private key pair that allows traffic to be encrypted and decrypted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's just a more secure way to send data back and forth, and it also serves as a point to actually verify who you're sending that data to. It's very important for verifying that the website is the site that you're at. I mean, I guess the the, the layman's uh, version of this is, you know, when you're on your bank's website, you uh, you know, you always want to make sure that there's that green uh, padlock, usually something like that, uh, in the address bar that shows that not only is the site encrypted with SSL, but usually a, a financial institution, something like that. They're going to go out of their way to. Um, they're actually going to go out of their way to find a, a an extended certificate, right? That's going to actually say, uh, you know, that this is absolutely the. Um, uh, th this is absolutely your bank, right? It's uh, Bank of America. It's uh, Security Service Federal Credit Union, whatever uh, bank you use, and they'll they'll use that to verify them. Yeah, so the, the extended validation certificates basically go through and add a bunch of extra steps in the process of issuing a certificate to, another, or to a uh, business. So they go, sh go through, make sure it's actually a legal company. Um, they go through and actually physically verify that identity. Uh, this fuse a couple other a couple other steps are added in there as well. Yeah, so the, the entire purpose of the CSR generator was to kind of alleviate the issues our customers saw. Uh, so basically, we saw a negative experience when traditionally generating CSRs. It would involve a customer creating a ticket. So it's quite a few steps to, to kind of get to the end result. Um, so what we did is we just kind of created a tool to basically give us a single location to generate, retrieve, and uh, share CSRs with the support team. Lindsay, tell us a little bit about what that private key does and why we need to make sure that that remains uh, intact and in the customer's possession. Um, I mean, from the most basic way to put it, uh, it's it's kind of like your your key to your padlock. Um, you don't want to give it out to the public. Um, you you want to keep it secret. So if anyone has that private key, they have the ability to decrypt that message and they have the ability to see what's inside of it. So the private key is really where all of this works. Um, it's it's really the thing you need to keep, you know, to yourself. Yeah, that's a great point, and um, you, you really don't want that to be floating around uh, because you can either decrypt everything or you can use that same uh, key to get you, you know a counterfeit certificate, and uh, you can engage in a man-in-the-middle attack, which is where somebody pretends to be uh, some of the, who they're not, and then you know I might pretend to be the bank, and uh, you would hit the website and it would look like it was the bank, and then I'd get all your uh, information and and use it for nefarious purposes. Um, so we definitely don't want that. Once the customer has their certificates uh, created, right, you'll, you'll receive back from the certificate authority a couple of different um, a, a couple of different files, and they're going to be a, um, a a key pair that you'd actually uh, place on the server or the load balancer. And what what are those different things? There's, there's certificates, chain certificates. Tell us a little bit about the differences between those. Uh, yeah, so you generally when you receive your certificate from an authority, you receive both a certificate and a CA bundle. A CA bundle is a certificate authority bundle, and it basically provides a chain of validation down from the root all the way up to the actual reseller that you buy your certificate from. So it basically just provides you a chain of trust. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's the only thing you really get from there. Uh, that in combination with private key is pretty much all you need. Yeah, I mean, a wild card SSL can basically be treated as a normal SSL certificate. Um, the the thing to remember when you're generating a wild card certificate is to also include the actual domain you want as well as the wild card. So, for example, if you're going to do example.com, you want to use example.com as a domain name 
and then use the wildcard as an alternative name or vice versa depending on your CA. Um, beyond that, there's really not too much trickery involved with it. It's treated the same. Uh, the wildcard will match all of those subdomains. Uh, granted, they're on the same tier. So one stipulation people don't really know about is um, if you purchase a wildcard certificate for star.example.com, that certificate will not match star.dev.example.com. So it has to be on the same tier. So with our cloud load balancers, we do have two different options. Uh, we have an SSL pass-through, which allows the SSL connection to be uh, encrypted all the way from your client to your backend server through the load balancer. Uh, we also have an SSL termination, where the SSL request is terminated at the cloud load balancer, and that data is passed back to the servers as HTTP. Um, obviously, with the cloud load balancer, it's going to allow your environment to be more scalable. Uh, you're not going to depend on resizing uh, when you need more resources. So putting on the cloud load balancer kind of sets up that whole environment for a more scalable, cloudy solution, I guess is the best way to put it. So through that encryption, that or that decryption that happens at the load balancer level, when you pass the traffic back to whatever web server may be behind there, you're actually able to see more information about who that end user was, and that gives you more visibility, whereas with a pass-through, uh, it looks like it's all coming from your load balancer. Uh, so there, there are some ways you can work with those two components, but there are some changes that, um, that you see in that traffic when you make that decision, do I pass the traffic or do I decrypt and then pass the traffic? Yeah, in that, in that situation, it largely comes down to your application and its needs, um, or your needs as uh, as an organization. Do you need your client's IP address, or do you need that information encrypted all the way to the back end? Um, I mean, in the end, it comes down to the customer-specific requirements. And in the managed operations team, we actually set up monitoring alerts for customers. Uh, they'll actually tell you when your certificate is about to expire, and you can kind of set that threshold however you want which is a fantastically valuable uh, Great. piece of the puzzle, something that's already baked in. You just use um, more broadly. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you all next week.